Good afternoon and welcome to Reset Live Lectures. Dear friends, as you know that you have started a series on disaster management and today we are conducting yet another lecture in the same series. In today's lecture, we will discuss the concept of land hazard, landslide hazard, I am sorry, and its origins, its types and mechanisms. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subject expert, Professor R.B. Singh. Professor Singh is Professor in Department of Geography in Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. He is also Vice President of International Geographical Union. Without further ado, I would like to welcome sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome sir. Thank you Amritji. <coughs> Dear viewers, in continuation of our uh, discussion <coughs> relating to disaster management, today we are going to take up very important disaster particularly for the hilly region <coughs> that is known as landslide hazards. We will try to understand origin, types, mechanism of landslides and also we will try to see the impacts and mitigation measures. Landslides are one of the most devastating disasters. Human beings have been encountering these hazards since long. It causes loss of lives and properties every year around the world and they are particularly devastating in hilly, mountain and highland regions of the world. Landslide slide hazard has become a common feature in the Himalayan regions. In the Himalayan region of India, land degradation is mainly caused by debris flow, landslides and has become an annually occurring phenomena. First of all, I would like to put before you percentage of occurrence of natural disaster by different disaster types taking into consideration of the data from 1995 to 2015 and you can find landslides places fifth rank in the percentage of occurrence of natural disasters followed uh, uh, after uh, flood, storm, earthquake, extreme temperature and then landslides. Now I would like to take another important figure. Number of people killed by disaster type if you will see and here you can find we have the more people killed due to a storm, then extreme temperature, flood, drought and then landslides and wild uh, uh, fire having around 3 percent total and total number of people died nine, during the 1995 to 2015 more than 20,000 people. Definition of landslides. Landslides are defined as the movement of a mass of rock, debris or soil along a downward slope due to gravi gravitational pull. The term landslides includes a wide range of ground movement as rock falls, deep failure of slopes and shallow debris flow. Gravity is acting on a steep slope which is the responsible factor for the landslide. Landslides hampers de various developmental activity often causing 
huge economic losses and poverty, uh, property damages by posing a threat to settlements, human habitat, livelihoods and transport infrastructure in various mountain regions. I would like to put before you global landslide disaster data, date, place and casualty. Now you can understand from your own perception, you know I have taken data from 1792, uh, even the Nagasaki city in Japan 50,000 people died. 16th December 1920, uh, again in China, more than 100,000 people died. Another very important severe landslides occur, you know, 31st May 1970 in Peru, where more than 22,000 people died. In recent years, 2nd May 2014, in Afghanistan, 2007 people died. I would like to take a very most important uh, set landslides, you know what it is called the mudslide, a type of landslides. In Bad, Badakhshan, uh, it is known as Badakhshan uh, uh, mudslides on 2nd May 2014 and increased their toll more than 2700 and this is mainly due, due to lack of awareness among local community. Another very important landslide I would like to mention about uh, and how this Japanese scientist they are trying to do the uh, you know landslide tsunami motion for vulnerability and exposure for integrated landslide tsunami risk assessment. Uh, Unjin Mayuyama landslide tsunami disaster in Japan where 50,000 people were killed by landslide and the landslide induced tsunami around Ariake Sea in 1792, very long back. Considering these all facts, you know, you will remember we discussed earlier during the 2015, March 2015 global community organized Sendai framework of disaster risk reduction and same time in March 2015 on 16th March, ISDR International Consortium on Landslides Sendai Partnership 2015-2025 for Global Promotion of Understanding and Reducing Landslide Disaster Risk was held and they tried to find or improve our understanding about mechanism of landslides, minimizing impact and how we can mitigate adverse effects. Significance for studying landslides. Landslides are a serious natural hazard common to almost every region in the world. Even in developed countries like United States and Canada, landslides cause losses. In, in the United States, average 50 people lose their lives from landslide every year. In Canada, between 1840 to 1999, 570 people lost their lives due to disasters. Even these city, uh, these countries are having a lot of awareness about the these disaster. 25 percent of the total geographical area of India is prone to landslides. Landslides risk awareness needed in India. Nearly 15 percent of land mass prone to landslides, according to research done by uh, Defense Research DTRL laboratory, I quote, landslides rank third in terms of number of death due to natural disaster, unquote. Himalayan landslides kill 1 percent per 100 kilometer square per year. 
the estimated average loss due to landslides in the Himalaya costs 20 lives and loss of 550 crore every year. And so that is why considering this uh, issue on priority basis, our highest policy making body NDMA, National Disaster Management Authority constituted a task force on landslide awareness and we are in the process of preparing the report. I am chairing this task force. India vulnerable region to landslides. Vulnerable regions to landslides are Himalaya and the western Ghats. The Himalayan mountain belts comprises of tectonically unstable younger geological formations subjected to seismic severe seismic activity. The western Ghats and Nilgiris are geologically stable but have uplifted plateau margins influenced by new tectonic activity together with heavy rainfall. So, these are the some of the important drivers in the region and instability in the highland areas are posing threat in the low lying area. Through this diagram coming from USGS, I would like to put before you different types of uh, landslides and this one is a based on the type of movement, falls like a rock fall, debris fall, earth fall, slides it may be divided into the two category rotational and transles, uh, translational uh, rock slides, debris slides, earth slides, then lateral spreads, rock spread, debris spread, earth spread and flow, rock flows, debris flow, earth flow and the complex combination of two or more principal type of movement. It is very important to understand different types of landslides. First rotational landslides, the surface of rupture is curved concavely upward and the slide movement is roughly rotational about an axis that is parallel to the ground surface and tra traverse across the slides. Translational uh, uh, slide means the landslide mass moves along a roughly planar surface with little rotation or backward tilting. Block slides, the moving mass consists of a single unit or a few closely related units that move down slope as a relatively coherent mass. Now you can see this, the diagrammatical representation of the different slides rotational, translational, block, rock fall, topple, slides, debris flow. So, in first part you can see this the how the steep slow, slope is a very very important, but on second you know section the even on gentle slope we have a different type of the slope uh, like a creep or uh, lateral spread. Fall, falls are abrupt movements of massage of geological materials such as rocks and boulders that become detached from a steep slopes and or cliffs. Falls are strongly influenced by gravity, mechanical weathering and presence of water. Topple, toppling uh, failures are described by the forward rotation of a unit or units below or low in the unit under section of gravity and forces exerted by nearby units or by fluid in the cracks. Debris flow is a form of rapid mass movement in which a combination of loose soil, rock, organic matter, air and water mobilize as a slurry that flow down slope debris avalanche, it is also known as this is a variety of very rapid to extremely rapid debris flow. Earth flow have a characteristics of our glass shape, the slope material 
liquefies and run out forming a ball or depression at the head. Then mud flow is an, it is an earth flow consisting of material that is a weight enough to flow rapidly and that contains at least 50 percent sand, silt and clay size particles. Then clip you know again you, you might have seen and remember through the diagram that how even in within gentle slope this occur and it is the imperceptibly slow steady downward movement of slope farming soil or rock, but too small to produce shear failure. Lateral spread are distinctive because they usually occur on very gentle slope or flat terrain. It is very important to see different driving factors of landslides. Why landslides occur? What are the important factors? I would like to classify into different categories. First, like a geological factors, which include weak geological materials, sensitive materials, shear materials, joint or fissure material, adversely oriented mass discontinuity, adversely oriented structural discontinuity, contrast in permeability, morphological factors, which includes tectonic or volcanic uplift, glacial rebound, fluvial erosion or slope toe, wave erosion or slope toe, glacial erosion, erosion of lateral margins, subterranean erosion, deposition loading slope, vegetational loss. Here you can see, one can see a positive relationship between road construction, landslides and loss of vegetation. So, landslide due to destruction, uh, due to landslide occurrence, even the vegetation destruction occurred, but even deforestation may bring landslides also. How you can see this, one can see a positive relationship between road construction and in Himalaya, one can see 1962, before 1962 and after 1962, a great difference in the occurrence of the landslide particularly in Uttarakhand Himalaya, uh, where we had massive road construction and so sometime we use the, uh, you know, uh, dynamites also for the leveling the land and, uh, you know, mountainous region. So, a uh, lot of destruction due to landslides occur. Physical factors, again some nat very natural intense rainfall, rapid snow melt, prolonged exceptional precipitation, rapid draw down of floods, earthquakes, volcanic eruption, uh, freeze and thaw uh, weathering, shrink and uh, swell weathering. And most important aspects I would like to bring before you, human induced factors, excavation of slope or its stoke, loading slope or its crust, drawdown of reservoir, deforestation, irrigation, mining, artificial vibration, water leakage from utility, vulnerability and landslides. Landslides is a dynamic naturally occurring phenomena that occurs annually along the major road routes. Just you have seen this the occurrence of landslide uh, and uh, construction of the road, which are located in the folds of the Himalaya and highland. Vulnerability is increasing with an alarming rate due to increasing anthropogenic activity, human activity. One of the major driving factors of landslides is rainfall in this higher reachage of the natural slopes. The problem of landslides and debris flow mass movement becomes more aggravated during monsoon season. So, one can see a very clear cut distinction between before monsoon and after monsoon lot of uh, landslides occur after monsoon. So, rainfall, you know, uh, play a very important role. 
through the main causative factors behind the instability of land surface which are mainly geomorphological and geological in nature. Now you can see here correlation between road construction, landslides and loss of vegetation and ultimately also the biodiversity. How a stage 1 you can see natural slope pre modified stage, second you know is a disabled a steady state condition, then in third level the nature re stabilizing a steady state condition and you can find you know the how gradually decreasing the loss of vegetation and ultimately loss of biodiversity. Visualization of landslide hazard risk and impact. Now, you can see this risk due to uh, uh, landslides. We have high risk, high impact and then low risk, low impact uh, of landslide. Particularly in the high risk, high impact events that need maximum attention. So, here in this way such type of the typology for very important for policy makers because a many mitigation measures can be done on the basis of such typology. Then events that get ignored and come as surprise. So, high a low probability and high impact you know events are coming which is which are becoming a very common phenomena these days and and low risk and the high hazard events that lead to a low return or on investment landslide monitoring methods in india one is very important landslide hazard zonation mapping. It is a tool to identify those areas which are or could be affected by landslides and assessing the probability of such landslides occurring within a specified period of time. The preparation of uh, land hazard, uh, landslide hazard zonation mapping include the study of geology, geomorphic setting, slope condition including existing and potential instability. So, I would like to bring here the concept of landscape synthesis, where we used to deal the landscape structure and landscape potential. And most important land use change, land use change information. Inventory of landslides incident, the basic objective for the preparation of land hazard zoning map is the availability of landslide inventory database, which indicates the instability of the hazard in a given area. So, taking into consideration of the various factors, you know multi criteria analysis can be done. Now, we have possibility for using such analysis through uh, GIS system, GIS framework uh, and we can uh, adopt the rating method or weighting method, giving the weighting the factor, rating the items and then it is possible to evolve the some weightage and then uh, different type of the zonation mapping can be done and such zonation map can be very, very useful for the uh, uh, policy makers. Here you can see rainfall induced rock slides at Bhagsu Nag in Dharamsala area and little uh, uh, you know it is just along the road and you can see this the how the some vegetation can be you know impending vegetation loss in after the expense uh, expanding these landslides. A landslides inventory database require detailed information not only for present, but also about the past. Site study of landslide is very, very important site specific study, the historical assessment of landslides, investigate the landslides in detail, employing both surface and subsurface exploration technique to establish the type of slide causative factors leading to slope instability, stability status of the slope, monitoring of the slide to understand its 
dynamic behavior, extend the damage caused and likely to be caused due to further sliding, such type of mechanism of sliding and finally to suggest the most appropriate you know corrective measures to est stabilize the cell. So, stabilization is very very important. Here you can see the landslide hazard zonation map of India, very broad hazard zonation and you can understand from your own perception how you know starting from Uttarakhand to uh, Jammu Kashmir and then you know Arunachal Pradesh and some part of uh, Assam we have the more landslides you know Sikkim also we have a, a lot of problem of uh, uh, landslides. Then if you go to the southern India we have a landslides in uh, uh, starting from Kerala to particularly in the western coast Kerala to Maharashtra and many landslides occur you know. Then in between in peninsular India also landslides occur. Here I would like to show the vulnerability map of landslides in Himachal Pradesh, uh, particularly overall vulnerability map you can see the very high area how in the middle uh, section of Himachal Pradesh because of the uh, steep slopes. In high Himalaya we have a more gentle, so again you know not uh, much problem. Then we have both side the high uh, you know and then in into moderate type of thing the, in the particularly in the district like uh, uh, Sirmore, Solan, Bilaspur and Hamirpur where we have moderate type of landslide. Monitoring of landslides, uh, selecting a specific location depending upon the type of movement, location, hazard and risk, selection of monitoring methods and frequency of data collection data processing and methods of result presentation. Now you can see here 26 June 2005 flash fired and heavy landslide due to rainfall once again disrupted road in the Kulang village near Manali area. Uh, uh, 16th June 2008 a massive landslide blocked the road for one day in Gulaba 26 kilometer from Manali due to heavy rainfall. 17th March 2008, a massive landslide triggered due to heavy rain comprising large boulders and mud blocked Manali to Serchu Road between uh, uh, Nehru Kund uh, uh, to Manali leading to death of 6 civilian and severe injury of 13 person. As per media reports due to uh, rainfall 12, 13 July 2011 landslide trigger at Rani Nala, this all in the Manali area. So, Manali stretch is starting from the Manali to Rohtang Pass, one stretch a very, very severe and then Uttarakhand is starting from Srinagar to, <coughs> to the Badrinath, that stretch is a very heavy, you know. On 5th March 2012, a massive left side triggered due, due to heavy rain and completely damaged the road 2011. So, it is very important for us to have a total regime measurement. The main purpose is to record changes in the groundwater level, yield of water, rainfall records are required to develop corrective measures between rainfall, slow movement and pore pressure in the landslides. These are very, very important to understand the behavior, landslide behavior. And for that the real time monitoring of landslides, for that LIDAR, synthetic aperture radar, uh, different type of GPS technique are being used and many students are working on this in these, these two areas. Local warning system for landslides, this is also very, very important and we have to work for that, that how we can develop the method so that people can use locally such warning system. And uh, this includes the scientific and technical committee, government authority and civil agency, local community. Thank you.
welcome viewers in continuation of our discussion on landslide hazards in this section we will try to understand impact of landslides and then we will try to have the disaster risk reduction measures and i would like to take a case study from a different part of our country landslides vulnerability and risk in india according to national institute of disaster management about 25% of the total geographical area of india is prone to landslides in all 22 states and parts of union territory of panducherry puducherry and andaman and nicobar islands are affected by these hazards the phenomena of landslides is pronounced during the monsoon period impact of landslides landslides along the national highway 1A and NH1B in Jammu and Kashmir the Rishikesh Badrinath pilgrimage route in Uttarakhand highway and roads in Darjeeling and Sikkim and the Dimapur Imphal and Silong Silchar national highway in the northeastern regions have been frequent and have caused a big economic loss time to time in the western ghat over 500 lives were lost due to landslides in konkan area of maharashtra during rain in 2005 which accounted for 100 lives in mumbai metropolitan area now i would like to put before you very important uh, statistics about list of major hazardous event landslide debris slides flow and rock falls particularly in nanda devi biosphere reserves we have done some research work on this area and you can find you, we collected the data from many historical records the in 1936 1952 1948 75 near badrinath rock falls accompanied by the avalanche occurred and manna village was partially abandoned on august 1979 in 2002 in bami village near badrinath a avalanche blocked river for few hours it caused land lake uh, outburst flood and completely washed away uh, bami village near badrinath in uh, 20 july 1970 again in hanuman gadi near badrinath to haridwar heavy rainfall blockage the river and flood flood also occurred and excess excessively rainfall occurred almost about 275 mm in few hours led to you know a big uh, uh, landslides at uh, temporary dam lakes uh, that burst out causing the considerable loss of life particularly the 381 people died uh, 5th july 2004 in badrinath cloud burst leading to landslide uh, 2005 again in gobind ghat cloud burst and landslide 2010 uh, joshi mart badrinath area so these are the important so on the basis of these different events i can say that indian himalaya is a most vulnerable of landslides indian himalaya consists of 16.2% of the total geographical area of our country and parts the northern boundary Indian Himalayan region is spreading on 10 states Jammu Kashmir Himachal Pradesh Uttarakhand Sikkim Arunachal Pradesh Meghalaya Nagaland Manipur Mizoram Tripura and hill regions of two states like Assam and West Bengal comprising about 95 districts of the country total population of Indian Himalayan region is almost 46 million the approximate population density of 
Indian Himalayan region is 181 person per square kilometer quite high density of population in compared to Alps and other Albrus or any other mountain region. I would like to put before you here the few photographs coming from different part of Himalaya and the world. Forest cover degradation induced downslope mass movements such as landslides, rock falls and debris flows in different mountain regions. Now I would like to review major landslides in our country and we will try to see the impact particularly the loss of life. Guwahati landslides in Assam, this took place in 1948, September 1948 due to heavy rains. Over 500 people died in landslides and according to report landslide burned the entire village. Darjeeling landslide in West Bengal, this landslides happened around October 4, 1968. The landslide was triggered by floods and the 60 kilometer long highway was cut in 91 parts. As per reports, thousands of people died in landslides. I would like to take this Malpa and Mumbai landslides. Malpa landslides in Uttarakhand, consecutive landslides occur on August 11, August 17 in 1998 in the village of Malpa where over 380 people died as the entire village washed away in the landslides. The landslide is one of the worst landslides in India. Mumbai landslides in you know, Maharashtra is occurred in July 2000. This occurred in sub took place in the suburbs of Mumbai due to heavy rain which was followed by land erosion. As per report around 67 people died and local transport were affected. Amburi, Kedarnath and Malin landslides. Amburi landslides in Kerala. It is also known as worse you know landslide in particularly in the Kerala history occurred in 2000, November 2001. Again due to heavy rains and around 40 people died in the accident. Kedarnath landslide took place on June 16, 2013, very devastating result of Uttarakhand cloud burst. Over 5,700 were reported dead and, and over 4,200 villages had been uh, uh, affected by the floods and post-flood landslides. This was a very, very severe and we had uh, many programs started after that, you know, uh, particularly the mapping neighborhoods and uh, variety of program in order to create the awareness among the people. Malin landslide Maharashtra uh, occur uh, also in rainfall. So what you are getting that rainfall, heavy rainfall, you know flood mixing with flood, cloud burst, these are the important drivers. Here the few photographs I would like to put before you landslides in Kedarnath, Uttarakhand on 16th June 2013, date tall 5700. You can see this the, what happened, devastation in Kedarnath, this the and impact was visible for a long time on that region. You know, many people are still missing landslides activity at a result of intense rainfall in Kedarnath and downstream area. You can see this the uh, type of the you know picture that time and how the occurred. Here I would like to bring before you the uh, Bhuvan data NRSC. Kedarnath before and after the disasters showing the complete devastation. You can understand from your own perception the pre time and the post time, how the different buildings washed away, you know, and in such slopey area, such narrow valley, it was very difficult to, 
you know, locate the people, you know. Landslides in valley of flowers. So, Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserves, valley of flowers, these are the important, that whole stretch starting from that uh, uh, Srinagar to Rudra Prayag and, uh, and uh, Josimot, that area. Okimot side is not much, you know, uh, landslide problem. Problem is there, but not so much. It is a little bit gentle slope, but the uh, Josimot side and if you will cross Josimot and then before uh, Badrinath, we have a very, very uh, vulnerable stretch. Landslides in Nehru Kun in 2008, according to BRO landslide data during 17th March 2008, a massive landslide comprising large boulders and mud blocked NH21 near Nehru Kund, leading to death of 6 civilians and severe injury, 13 person and completely damaged by uh, roads. Largely landslides occur due to the anthropogenic activity, human drivers, but in background rainfall poses a very important threat. However, I would like to tell you that in very high Himalaya, where very little human interference is there, even landslides occur. So, landslide still may occur, even occur in the region where there is no human intervention in the high Himalaya due to the steep slope. So, slope is also very, very important, relief feature, very, very important, but largely, you know, a contribution coming from human induced changes, debris flow near Siagri village, see this the so high and we have a in Himalayan area this all drainage basins, they have a very high energy flow in the rivers like a bias. Landslide debris flow material has buried and damaged human settlements. Uh, this in Tapri region in Himachal Pradesh, you can see that how people are constructing on the slope, uh, a steep slope and then due to the, because sometimes a steep slope, they are more safer because they are more safe from the flooding or waterlogged situation. So, so that is why they construct more houses along the, uh, uh, on slope. I would like to put a figure from Geological Survey of India, landslide study by Geological Survey of India in Himachal Pradesh till 2013. And you can see this the how in uh, susceptibility between river basin, Ravi, Bias and Satlaj area uh, in the western side, Ravi, Bias region and then the Satlaj region, uh, then they have a few routes where they have a more uh, landslides occurrence like a Kalka Simla railway route, Narkanda, Rampur, Khab route, Kangra, Dalhousie route and Arkut Solon route. These are the some of the, even as a town like Simla, you know, a lot of landslides occur surrounding to Simla also. In high Himalaya, we have a avalanche and other type of problem we will discuss maybe in next time, but uh, 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 this one uh, largely occurred uh, in this steep and the low lying area. Now, role of academics and particularly I would like to mention applied geologists or geographers, how we can play a very important role and we can give a background study to the planners and decision makers. First, mapping of landforms, resources and hazards. Huge maps of different type of landforms. In this context, GPS technique for 
real time data one can get, establishment of rates of geomorphological change by even remote sensing, through remote sensing also we can get a lot of <coughs> land surface features. One can do the direct monitoring also using the sequential map, archives, etc., historical assessment, est est establishing a cause of change, uh, also assessing the different type of the management options post construction assessment of different type of engineering scheme and one I would like to mention about the Heidel projects. Uh, now it is more and more uh, a small scale Heidel projects are being you know proposed. So, one you can understand from our perception it is not very easy to find the suitable place, place you know for these sites. Prediction of future events and changes that can be also done take into consideration of the real time or near real time data coming from remote sensing, GPS and we can put under the G, uh, GIS. In this context also I would like to mention that the climatic data is very important. When you go to the upper Himalayan region when dealing with the avalanche then upper atmospheric you know uh, monitoring is very very needed you know temperature in, uh, in the upper atmosphere. And for that then we can prepare the landslide susceptibility map. Such susceptibility maps can be peer, uh, prepared take into consideration of the amount of rainfall available in that region, slope of the area, relief features, uh, uh, pattern of deforestation or land use practices, road construction. Uh, grazing prospects, we all can be combined under multi criteria analysis, assigning the weightage and landslide susceptibility map uh, is, be here, is prepared here, where we can prepare the zones like a slides uh, possibility, moderate possibility, severe possibility, and very severe possibility. So, policy makers can take very severe area first for stabilizing slope and any land use activity, human activity or developmental activity can be avoided in that very severe area. Slightly where there is a little possibility where we can you know that can be acceptable and we can do little investment for minimizing the uh, uh, slope instability. Here we prepare multi hazard vulnerability assessment. So, not only the landslides because you know you will find that in some places we have not only landslides occur, but also landslides together with avalanche, flooding and then we combine together here in the risk assessment. Again multi criteria analysis done, but here first individually we we prepare the uh, uh, land landslide susceptibility, flood, you know, risk zone, then the avalanche risk zone, and then we combine all together and prepare the multi hazard vulnerability or risk assessment. You know, vulnerability assessment is a very key to risk assessment. Exposure, exposure elements can be. Uh, you know analyze can be understood very carefully look at, take into consideration of such type of the land farm data land escape synthesis and you can find here very low low moderate high very light this type of prioritization done i think such exercise very very important for planners and decision makers so through this way people from geography geologist or other earth scientist, you know understanding the language of landscape and language of society, developmental activity, we can combine together and then we can prepare such type of the map. So, map matter in landslides mitigation. 
preparedness before landslides. What we can do? Do not build houses near a steep slope, close to mountain edges, near drainage or natural erosion. Such type of things are very, very important and we have to promote. Conduct landscape assessment prior to construction activity and for this uh, task, I think geographer or geologist can take up this matter. Contact local official, state geological survey or department of natural resources, university department of geography and geology asking information on landslides on area, specific information on areas vulnerable to landslides and request to expert opinion on a very detailed site analysis of your property, corrective measures you can take if necessary. Watch the pattern of a storm water drainage near your home, note the places where runoff water coverage is increasing flow in channels. These are area to avoid during a storm. It is very important to learn about emergency response and evacuation plan for your neighborhood. So, mapping neighborhood, I think panchayat, any village schools, rural schools, colleges, they can take up such exercise for preparing the such maps and students can be involved in this. Even for evacuation plan or mapping where there is a possibility of landslide, if landslides already occurred, when occurred in the past, just preparing the whole history of that you know landslides, very important to know present is what? Present is the transformation of the past and future will be the transformation of the present. We have to bring here the past, present and future. Minimize risk at surrounding, have flexible pipe fittings installed to avoid gas or water leak, plantation on slope or built retaining walls, mud pole area built channels or de deflection walls to direct the flow around own house and neighborhood. During a landslide, stay alert and listen radio or watch television for warning of intense rainfall. Be aware that intense so, before and during, this is very, very important. If you are in area vulnerable to landslide and debris flow, consider living if it is safe to do so. Driving during an intense storm can be disastrous. If you remain at home, move to a safer shelter zone. Listen for any useful sounds that might indicate moving debris such as tree, cracking or boulders knocking together. If you are near a stream or channel, be alert of any sudden increase or decrease in water flow and for a change from clear to muddy water. Such changes may indicate landslide activity of a stream to be prepared to move quickly. Be aware that a strong sacking from earthquake can induce or identify the effect of landslides. Post landslides, a stay away from the slide area they may be danger of subsequent slides. Listen to local radio and watch television station for the latest emergency information. Keep watch over flooding watch, uh, which may cause landslides or debris flow. Flood sometime follow landslides and debris flow because they may both be started by the same event. Reporting potential Hazards will get the utility turn as quickly as possible, preventing further hazard and injury. You know, these are the minor, you know, aspects, but sometimes it is very important for our government, for our policy makers, so media, through media to promote this type of the, you know, uh, the guidance and some type of the, you know, alert. We have to be alert, you know in a uh, disaster. Check the building foundation and surrounding land for damage, regular maintenance of foundation and surrounding. Replanting on damaged ground can resist flooding and additional landslides in the near future. 
it is very important to give focus also on the vulnerable groups. We have many vulnerable groups, help a neighbor who may require a special assistant like a children below 6 years, infant or mid below 12 years, elderly people, people with disability, elderly people and people with disability may require additional assistance. In some places women also require the, some special assistance and they have a special need also. So that type of the generally in the, during the disaster management we do not care for uh, such type of people who care for them and who have large family may need additional assistance in emergency situation. So what I would like to tell you that we have a different type of page, impact page, relief and rehabilitation page and long term mitigation and preparedness plan. Impact page, particularly the response, forecast, early warning, preparedness and alertness, evacuation is very important. In the impact, close monetary, uh, monitoring of impact, establishing emergency communication, you know deploying rescue team, medical support and other lives saving activity and in this context panchayat should be can play a very very important role uh, uh, you know local level you know community groups can be involved in that supply air dropping of food drinking water essential items sometime uh, during the emergency very much needed post impact medical care uh, 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 trauma management food clothing and shelter estimating the loss disposal of body, repair, restore some essential services, relief and rehabilitation phase, particularly the temporary shelters, repair of roads, supply to agriculture, distribution of seeds, restoration of health and education facility, distribution of relief and in this context I would like to tell you that building durable houses for victim is very very important so that is why this building codes also can be taken. Long term safe construction for houses, hazard proof roads, flood protection measure, improvement in the warning system, organizing people for the counting, you know. And so, resilience building measure is very important, proper utilization of land, control of overgrazing, plantation of tree, mapping of lands rejuvenation, village level campaign and awareness. In this context, the uh, many activity taken by NDMA, preparation of guideline, improvement, I already mentioned about the task force constitution about the landslide awareness, early warning, capacity building very, very important. Need for effective disaster management is the building of knowledge base for local people and a strong mock drills. Now you can see here in one case study mock drill organized in the hilly area. Public awareness and education for landslide risks and very, very important take into consideration of the hazard reduction, vulnerability reduction, exposure reduction and loss, you know, uh, reduction. These all should become the integral part of the, you know, governance system. Landslides campaign you can see here in the Uttarakhand area. And finally, I would like to conclude that the compared to Western Ghat region, the slides in the Himalayan region are huge and massive. Awareness is key to reduce landslide risk reduction. The most re important resource is the disaster landslide risk reduction, active involvement of academic and decision making. Vibrant youth of India can play a multiple significant role in integrating the social societal stakeholders. So thank you very much. Dear friends, we hope that with today's lecture you were able to understand the concept of landslide hazard and its various aspects. On that note, we would like to thank Professor Singh for coming here and delivering this wonderful lecture. And thank you dear friends for watching our lecture. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.